Sadly, as predicted, the so-called Arecibo radio telescope today collapsed. The guy wires holding up this 1950s icon totally gave way, dropping the receiver onto the dish in these staggering and sad pictures. You can't overestimate the importance of the Arecibo facility for Puerto Rico. It was inspirational to a whole generation of young Puerto Rican scientists. But its true function was never really understood. Today, I'm going to tell you that story. You might well have seen part one where I describe the so-called Arecibo telescope as a military radar station. And I got some interesting comments. First of all, from outraged viewers, but they got their information from Hollywood from the James Bonds, or the X-Files, or the Jodie Foster and Contact. So stay tuned for a deep dive into the real history of what's really called the US Defense Ionosphere Research Station. So the real history of this 1,000 feet, 305 meter circular flat dish started life in the 1950s. You can't overestimate how terrifying the launch of Sputnik 1 was to the United States. If the pesky Ruskies could put a baseball into orbit, they could send a nuclear bomb to Manhattan. If only the US had some form of defense against incoming missiles. The amount of money spent on researching an answer to that question is unbelievable. And one of the projects came from these two guys, William E. Gordon and Henry Booker. Gordon from Cornell University and Booker from the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, England. Both were working on a program of building a layer, a defense shield of charged particles around the Earth in a very high band around the Earth called the ionosphere. And they thought that they could disrupt, destroy anything with electronic components that passed through this band of charged particles. So research began to build a defense shield. At the time, the synonymously named Van Allen belts, named after Mr. Van Allen, were discovered. These are belts of charged particles that circle the Earth caused by our sun's cosmic radiation. They're hazardous for human biology and electronics to pass through. And even today, spaceships traveling through the Van Allen belts spend the minimum amount of time in the area. Van Allen and his researchers found that these belts followed magnetic force lines looping out of the earth, going around and joining it again, making this band of a no-go area. So maybe we could make our own and it would be a defense shield against nuclear missiles. So the US started a program to explore that and they exploded atomic weapons in our atmosphere. What they hoped to do was to build a band, an area that nothing could pass through. So how does this all relate to the Arecibo telescope? Well, interestingly, first of all, it was never going to be built in Puerto Rico. Much of these tests with the nuclear explosions in space were done in the Pacific and a large radar dish was needed, and it was going to be built on the island of Kauai, the northernmost island in the Hawaiian chain. But Hawaii was seen as too remote 
and it was swapped to Puerto Rico. And the reason they chose Puerto Rico was one, America had control over it. It was easy to contact it, but technically it's halfway between the Southern Atlantic military launch post and the Northern Atlantic secret base that I'll discuss now. So in a highly classified program, and here's footage that I'd never seen before of actually launching two nuclear bombs into our ionosphere from the South Atlantic. These exploded, forming a barrier which stretched from the launch position to somewhere secret in the Mid-Atlantic, and that's the Ascension Islands. Now, the Ascension Islands are fascinating, and I know something very secret about the Ascension Islands that you don't know, and I'll tell you now. First of all, the Ascension Islands are controlled by the United Kingdom. There's research station there, there's an airport, there's a US military base, and there's lots of telecommunication bases, which are controlled by the BBC. Somebody has to be in control of the Ascension Island, the senior government representative who can report back to the Foreign Office. And that position was the senior BBC man or woman who was based on the Ascension Islands. Not many people know this, but the BBC had its own kingdom and its own ruler and they were in charge of a small piece of rock in the Atlantic called the Ascension Islands. And the ideal place to see what this ionosphere alteration would do would be Puerto Rico. Walking in the wilderness of wild Puerto Rico, Gordon and Booker discovered an area of volcanic hills and deep valleys that could be ideal to hide a secret military radar station. And so in the late 50s, early 60s, the Arecibo-based ionospheric radar dish was built. Originally just a semicircular shallow dish in the hills above the village of Arecibo. Only later on were the iconic towers built which held this trapeze of radar sending and receiving equipment. But Gordon from Cornell was very smart. It was totally funded by the US Department of Defense, but he made them agree that nothing they did there would be classified. And so it would be open for the science community of the world to study. In its early years, this Department of Defense facility only looked at the ionosphere, looking for traces of incoming nuclear test weapons to see an ionization layer around an incoming missile or warhead. They could also, using the radar, they could check its size and its speed and its spin. And that's what they did at the facility. But it didn't really work. Well, Arecibo worked, but the project of making a defense shield didn't really work. The nuclear effect only lasted for a temporary period, and I guess they would have to deploy it in a time of tension, but it didn't make a permanent ionospheric alteration. So they came up with a new plan. And that project you and I know as HARP, or High Atmospheric Research Program, or an ionospheric heater that pumps thousands of kilowatts of energy into our upper atmosphere to build, hopefully, a defense shield. Or, as a side effect, because it didn't really work, they found it altered and blocked long distance radio communications. So that was a good project. And the military defense facility in Puerto Rico in the village of Arecibo was heavily involved in the HARP project. I can now reveal that here in a swamp 
a few miles from the iconic dish at Arecibo is a sister to the Alaskan Harp Project, an ionospheric heater which they use to mess around with Earth's upper atmosphere. So the whole place was a military radar dish, but it was possible to use the radar facility to do some other science. And so as the military backed out of the ionospheric alteration defense project, they lost interest in the Arecibo facility and it started being used more and more for general science research. By the mid 60s, it got picked up by NASA who wanted a detailed radar map of the moon's surface prior to landing on the moon. And for that, they used the world's biggest radar dish, Arecibo. And there was another mystery, a mystery shrouded in clouds. And that was, what did the surface of Venus look like? There was many proposed missions to fly out to Venus and send radar down through the clouds to map its surface. But in fact, in this fascinating quote, Werner von Braun, the German scientist now working for NASA, said, Why waste millions of dollars sending a probe to Venus when we can use the radar dish at Arecibo to map the surface features of Venus? And that is exactly what they did. Arecibo's radar facility was also used to map Mars and Mars moons, and more recently to make 3D models of near-Earth asteroids. By now, the telescope had moved on from its military or even NASA heritage and was doing science. So they lost most of their military budget although they still actually got millions of US dollars from the Department of Defense. But it now mainly got its funds from the NSF, or the National Science Foundation, a US government agency that funds big science projects. But slowly, the money began to run out. Puerto Rico loved the place, now as a science center, a place that busloads of kids could go and visit. The military radar started to be called the Arecibo Radio Telescope that it never was, thanks to Hollywood. It became the biggest tourist destination in Puerto Rico, thanks to Jodie Foster, Contact and 007. But people didn't understand really what the place did. Science research and funding slowly ebbed away and Puerto Rican universities started running this iconic facility. But now, over 60 years old, it began to show signs of decay. The guy wires holding up the trapeze of its instruments began to break. Hurricanes, earthquakes, and sadly, as of yesterday, a final earthquake in a neighboring country broke the final wires holding the place up. And here it is in ruins, probably never going to get rebuilt. The end of an era, but the end of an era of a US defense project, not the world's largest radio telescope that Hollywood wants you to believe. The truth is out there.